everyone inside the meeting room. Uh, we're just going to get the last few people who are in the waiting room and uh, and then we'll get started here in, in another minute or two. Welcome and thanks so much. Uh, okay then, so uh, we have um, a few people that are still trickling in in the waiting room. So I think what we'll do, because I want to try and give us as much time as possible to um, have a conversation and answer questions. So I'm going to get going. And um, and in doing so, I would uh, like to um, invite Sable Sweetgrass from the CADA team to offer a land acknowledgement and a welcome. Over to you, Sable. Hey, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sable Sweetgrass, and I am the Specialist for Indigenous Programs with Calgary Arts Development. Uh, I want to welcome you all here today and uh, to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Blackfoot. Um, and this is the traditional, uh, this is the territory of Treaty 7, uh, which was a treaty signed in 1877 between the Blackfoot, uh, which is the Siksika, Gainai, and Bigani, as well as the Tsutina Nation and the Stony Nakoda Nations. Uh, and so I just wanted to extend welcome here and um, also including the uh, Métis Nation Region 3 and all the First Nations uh, from all over North America that call Calgary Mohkenstis home. Um, this, uh, this land is, um, is home to so many First Nations today, um, but it's really open to, uh, it's really home to nations from all over the world, from where every corner of the world. So um, our responsibility is to care for this land, to care for the water, the air, the animals, but also one another, everyone that calls this place home. So thank you and welcome. Thank you very much, Sable. Um, you know, as, as many of you who've joined us on these calls before know, we always undertake a land acknowledgement and we always do so with meaning and um, Sable is a great teacher to us in terms of um, um, helping us understand that more and deeper and I think that's the thing that really begins um, our journey today in this conversation that um, for all of us on the call but hopefully and in particular uh, all of us here at Calvary Arts Development and me this is a learning journey uh, this is not an end in and of itself. This is something that um, we will all come to from different spectrums. So as Sable shares with us that today, many, many of us from all different nations call this place home. I am reminded of the journey that we'll all take in sharing this place and sharing this space today. So thank you all very much for joining us um, uh, in this part of the journey. So um, I want to start today with a, a few housekeeping things um, for those of you who perhaps are new to Zoom or newish to Zoom. I don't know if it's possible to be new to Zoom anymore. Um, we'll just give a, a, a couple of um, uh, technical uh, sort of items if you want to uh, uh, customize how you take part in the conversation today. Um, uh, I want to uh, first introduce uh, the members of our, our CADA staff. Um, uh, we have a full roster of uh, uh, people, not only from our staff, um, but also from our board of directors. So I want to welcome all of you and thank you for joining us. Um, uh, if you look in the participants chat box, so across the bottom of your screen, if you're on a computer or a laptop, and if you're on a phone or an iPad, it might be on the side. Um, there's a box called participants. So that participants uh, box, if you click it, will list everybody that is on um, uh, the call today. And um, when you look at that participant list, you'll see that many of us have our name, but we've put CADA in front of it. And that's so you know 
that uh, there are people here from CADA. So if you have a specific question or you want to reach out directly to one of our CADA team members, um, um, I'd encourage you to do that. Uh, for those members of our board, if you wish to change your name, you can do so as well. Um, in your participant box beside your name, if you bring your cursor over, you'll see a blue box that says more and you can choose rename. And under rename, you can put CADA. Um, some of you may wish to also put your personal pronouns um, uh, uh, beside your name as well. Um, that's helpful to me as, as we uh, keep track of uh, um, who may wish to make a comment or bring up questions um, over the course of this afternoon. Um, in the chat box, so same menu where you found participants, there's a chat box. In addition to some of the things we may say, we'll also be putting um, uh, some of that content in the chat box so you can read it. So for example, um, wanting to let everybody know we're recording this meeting and um, for future, uh, and that's for the purposes of those who couldn't join us today and also to reference uh, further. And we'll post that to our website. Um, in the chat box, you have the option of also privately sending a message to someone. When we record, uh, Zoom's only option is that we, as the people hosting the meeting, will see everything, including those private chats. So I just want you to be aware um, however, when we load the recording to our website, we will not put the chat in. But while well, Amy Jo, who's uh, undertaking our recording today, she'll see it. So I just want you all to know that and, and to be aware. Um, as well, some of you may have seen that we have our ASL interpreter, Kimberly, with us. Kimberly um, will be offering uh, ASL interpretation. If you are someone who would like to make use of um, that service that Kimberly's providing, if you take your cursor and you scroll over Kimberly's video, her image, you'll see a menu come up with three little dots. If you click on those dots, you'll see an option to pin the video. If you, scroll, if you highlight pin the video, then Kimberly's image will stay up on the screen for the entirety of our meeting today. And you can pin anybody's video for that matter. Uh, so uh, that's an option available to all of you. Uh, another option we have is that we're using an app called otter.ai. And otter.ai is a closed captioning service. Um, so at the top of your screen, you'll see a red button that says live on otter.ai live notes. If you open up that scroll down menu, you can ask to view the stream on otter.ai live notes. So if you'd like to make use of that closed captioning service, um, currently we're only able to offer it in English and they're working on other languages. Um, uh, and also know that it's an AI app. So you might get some good laughs over what you read on the streaming service. But there, that option's available to you as well. And these are all in the chat box. So if you need to scroll up to find the instructions, they'll be available to you. Um, I think that's what we wanted to cover there, uh, group agreements. So, um, so the CADA staff who are on call uh, today, in particular, and our board members, um, we've all been individually going through uh, um, this particular time, this last several weeks, as I know all of you have, and running the gamut of emotions. It's been um, a, 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 a tough time for many of us on our team, like all of you. And I think that um, as individuals, we come to this with humility and vulnerability, and um, we're really all glad that you could uh, join us today. And in that same context, um, when we undertake our work at Calgary Arts Development, we actually have a group agreement that we all signed on to as staff members in terms of how we work with each other. 
and um, Greg has very kindly posted the group agreement up in the chat box so you can scroll up and see it if you like but I'm just going to quickly read through what we as the CADA team are committed to today as we undertake this conversation we're committing to create a safe space for everyone by respecting each person regardless of how they identify including their gender sexuality age class religion beliefs nation physical neurological cognitive and mad identities we're sharing language that respects everyone we're speaking from our own perspective and avoiding making generalized claims or assumptions about others identities not interrupting others and on this zoom call we ask that everyone keeps their mic on mute unless they are speaking when we open the floor to conversation, comments, and questions, we will use the raise hand function um, in, and try our best to get as many people in as possible to uh, speak. We're mindful of how much time and space we take up uh, in discussion and making in order to make time and space for others to speak. We use I statements, I feel, I think, I wonder, etc. We respect those who wish to listen silently and we recognize that vulnerable interactions can occur and creating space to acknowledge and discuss hurt or offense if it does. We will honor the knowledge and experience others share. We will acknowledge the experiences and values that make each of us biased. We will allow others to help us check in with our biases in a respectful and productive way. And we acknowledge that we are all learning and may be at different places on our journeys. We'll be patient with ourselves and others as we remain open to continued learning. So those group agreements have gone up. Uh, Melissa's sharing them again. Thank you so much. And um, with uh, think those out of the way. Um, I'll talk a little bit about raising your hand when we, we get to that part of the questions um, piece, which will be in a few minutes. Um, uh, the first thing I wanted to, or the next thing, uh, if I may, I, what I'd like to do um, is just read to all of you, uh, some of you may have not seen it, uh, the statement that we posted on the weekend on our website. Um, uh, and uh, uh, well, I'll just read it and then we'll go from there. Uh, Black Lives Matter. The last few weeks we have seen actions in Calgary and around the world that have revealed and amplified the deep-seated racism that exists within our communities and systems. As an organization, Calgary Arts Development has committed ourselves to bettering our systems regarding equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility, and as such, we cannot remain silent. In the last 14 weeks, our work at Calgary Arts Development has been centered on artists and getting emergency relief funding to artists, arts workers, and arts organizations, and we missed responding directly to this. Doesn't mean at all that we don't care. We have always and continue to be artist-centered, and we take full responsibility for the time it took us to respond with a clear statement of where we stand and more importantly, the actions we are prepared to undertake. We support and will show our solidarity for black artists and the trauma that has and is experienced by all BIPOC, that's black, indigenous, people of color and artists with disabilities. Effective immediately, this is what we're going to do. Commission and compensate a working group to help us recraft our commitment to equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility, and further develop anti-racist policies and practices governing our work. Make a donation to the Calgary Black Empowerment Fund. Continue our commitment to our reconciliation journey as led by the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the teachings of elders and Indigenous artists who have generously provided counsel. We will convene our next virtual town hall on June 17th, specifically to discuss the issues that have most recently been raised, and we will listen carefully and deeply. There is more work to be done. We cannot do this work alone. 
and we call for the solidarity of all artists, arts workers, and arts champions to help us hear what we need to hear and continue to strengthen our EDIA work already underway. If you wish to reach out to us with comments, please contact us at edia at calgaryartsdevelopment.com. We value the trust that many, have you, that many of you have placed in us, and when we let you down, we feel it, and we will do better. On behalf of Calgary Arts Development, Patty Pond, President and CEO. So that was the statement um, that we prepared, and just saying that out loud and making it present in this space, um, uh, a number of you who have responded by joining us today on this call have also further asked uh, some questions. I expect that there are, I hope, that there are questions that um, uh, people will be uh, adding uh, to this conversation. Um, as I said in our statement, uh, we are here to listen carefully and deeply um, and uh, um, uh, really welcome being in this space and this uh, this time with you so um we're uh that's all i really wanted to say right now i i wanted us to have as much time as possible to take part in a conversation with each other um i we have developed uh just a little bit of a protocol so that i can keep track of everybody and because we have so many folks on the call I, I, I have to scroll through screens um, so please bear with me if I'm not necessarily catching all of you in order but I am keep um, trying to keep track and I also have Amy Joe and Leslie to help me with that um, if you have a question or a comment that you'd like to make um, in the chat box is it the chat box no it's the participant box where you can raise your hand. Oh, I can't see it now because I'm not on the, is it the participant box? Yes, it is the participant box. So if you look, low tech. Um, if, you, if you open the participant box, at the bottom of your screen, there is a raise hand function. And if you raise your hand, I can see you, uh, or I can see that little icon. Alternatively, if you've got your screen on and you just do this, hopefully between the CADA team, we, one of us will see you and um, they'll bring that to my attention. Um, uh, so uh, as well, when I call upon you, um, we will unmute you and you control your camera. So it is up to you, it's your choice as to whether or not you wish to be on screen and and that goes for any time during this call if you want to be off screen uh, uh, off your camera or not that's entirely up to you and uh, we respect the choice that you make in that regard um, the other way you can get to I'm just reading my messages here I thank you is uh, if you do alt U, that also raises your hand okay so um, I'm just scanning through Wow, seven screens, that's awesome. Um, I'm gonna start uh, answering a couple of questions that uh, were sent in to us earlier um, and uh, maybe get the conversation started that way. And, um, and then um, again, as maybe thoughts or comments arise, uh, I'd invite you to just let me know or raise your hand and that kind of stuff. So uh, thanks very much. Um, so some of the first questions that we've received, um, they're not, they're in no particular order uh, beyond the order that they came in. Um, just scrolling down to find them here. One of the questions that we received with respect to the statement was, what is the process that we are going to undertake uh, to put together the working group that uh, we reference in the statement? Um, currently, uh, we, have, uh, we don't have a plan for that because we haven't had a chance to ask and work with our communities. So um, 
what we know is that we have crafted a commitment and a statement to equity, diversity, inclusion, and access. Um, and we're seeking uh, the insight and the foresight and um, uh, assistance with crafting that statement because we want, the, we want our statement to mean something to the very communities that we were created to serve. And so you can't do that inside a bubble. Um, so in the days to come, uh, we'll be working with our communities to determine a, an appropriate process. I know that some of you uh, on this call, uh, as well as others, um, have indicated and demonstrated a desire and a willingness to be on that working group. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, we've noted that. And as we determine a process, we'll be sure um, to share that as broadly as we can. And in particular, with communities that we may not currently have a relationship with or we may not currently know. So um, um, uh, we may call upon, well not may, I will call upon those of you who maybe are connected to those communities to please be sure that they're aware of that process um, uh, once we're developing it. Um, uh, we don't want to just assume that the way we've, we've always done it is the way that we should be continuing to put those processes and those groups together. So that is something that we've learned and we've listened and heard. Um, uh, so uh, we're not gonna make those assumptions now. Um, in terms of the next question I have, uh, this is a, um, I'm making a quote because I didn't want to be paraphrasing anybody's questions. So the specific quote I have is, one issue that I would like to bring to attention in the discussion, if suitable, is the use of the sentence, people of color, that I heard frequently. This phrase or sentence is used commonly in our society, but for me, this is a kind of racism, since we should refer to people just like that, people. All people have a different color of skin. Some people, it's black, some are white, others are in the middle with a diversity of tones and colors. But in general, we are just people with diverse backgrounds and races. If people had no color, they would be transparent like air and therefore invisible or inexistent. So I think it is time to stop referring to people as people of color and just refer to people as people. Maybe this is a topic that should be put in the conversation. Thank you uh, for sharing that comment. Um, uh, you uh, heard me say it in the statement and make reference earlier. Uh, currently, there is a term BIPOC, B-I-P-O-C, and artists with disabilities, A-W-D. In the current conversation and context that we have been able to be a part of, those are the terms with which the communities that we're interacting with choose to use. Language is fluid, it's always changing, and we will change our language as well um, as guided by the communities at large who are choosing to be ch um, uh, um, referred to in that manner. So for the time being, uh, Calgary Arts Development will use BIPOC and AWD, Artists with Disabilities, BIPOC is Black, Indigenous, People of Color. Um, and then as it evolves, so will we in our language. Uh, another question we have here from the community. I'm, I'm still scanning for hands. Still scan, sorry, seven pages. Um, don't see any yet, so I'm going to continue with the community questions that we've received so far. Um, why is CADA only just now becoming aware of equity issues? Um, uh, we um, have certainly been aware of equity issues uh, for quite some time. Um, uh, we have uh, specifically and in particularly been addressing uh, issues of EDI is, well, first we called it DNI, diversity and inclusion, and then we called it EDI, equity, diversity and inclusion. And we've since then progressed 
to EDIA, Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and Accessibility. Um, and uh, this is work we've undertaken as an organization um, for uh, four years. Um, J.D. Derbyshire, who some of you may know from uh, the community and um, uh, her time with uh, Momo Dance and as an independent artist uh, in her own right, um, is also our inclusive designer in residence. And uh, J.D. has been working with us over these last few years in terms of our own learning around EDIA and, um, and in particular, um, we've seen our efforts um, um, uh, uh, sort of widen in the context of our grant investment programs. So for those of you who've perhaps been an assessor in our programs, you'll know that we now have group agreements. We have a commitment to equity within our assessment process. Uh, that's been underway for a couple of years. That's thanks to um, uh, folks like Melissa Tuplin, who's our current uh, manager of, of, of community investment and impact, and our previous team members like Jordan Balon, who have really led us in um, uh, uh, that work alongside JD. As a, as a staff and board, uh, staff in particular, we've been involved in a number of workshops around uh, bystander training, around um, intercultural sensitivity training, um, uh, uh, learning more work around emergent strategies. Uh, some of our team have been working on uh, work groups, in work groups around me and white supremacy. Um, uh, and there have been a, um, a number of efforts underway. Um, sort of tied to this question, and it came in separately, was also a question um, around um, where is our work uh, um, concerning murdered and missing uh, Indigenous women and girls, and um, where is that in our, in our work? And, and I will say that through our EDIA work, while it's not been specifically with regard to uh, that issue, we have been guided by the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and, and have done quite a bit of work in our own reconciliation journey. Um, uh, you will all, or you may be aware, we have the original People's Investment Program specifically intended for FNMI communities, First Nations, Métis, Inuit communities. Um, and so we have um, um, uh, tried to uh, um, implement our learnings um, as they've come along through these programs. And because over 80% of our budget is through the grant investment programs, that was the first place for us to try and ensure we were reducing and removing as many barriers as we could, knowing we still have work to do. Um, so that's what I'll say there. I um, Just going through other questions, how are the influencing organizations and committees that are representing the culture and arts in our community bringing the awareness of diverse culture and beliefs? Um, I can speak to how Kate is doing it, but I, I, I don't want to speak for other institutions or organizations. And I know that some of you, many of you are on the call. So this might be a place where um, I hope we can create the, the conditions where you can maybe speak to that and ask questions, um, uh, you know, perfect, getting this perfect isn't something we strive for. Always we strive to be better. Always we strive to ensure that everyone has a place in the circle. Um, and, and that we're all, for those of us in the circle, that we're clear what, those, what that role is and where that place is within the circle. Um, so from Kata's perspective, uh, all of the things I've said earlier, um, we'll continue to do our own training and workshopping uh, and professional development. Our board is now undertaking a more formal um, approach to this. And I know that Chima Nakemdrum is um, on the call with us. And, and Chima, I'd certainly uh, invite you to um, uh, make any comments uh, if, if you're uh, able to. I'm just kind of checking to see if I saw him on the call earlier and he is here. Um, Chima, do you want to speak to anything from a board perspective in this regard? Mute. There you go. Can you, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, fantastic. Hi, everybody. Um, 
Yeah, my name's Shima. I'm a member of uh, the CADA board. Um, I've also been a long, long time volunteer in the arts um, uh, here in Calgary. Uh, I sit on the board of uh, Alberta Theatre Projects, um, uh, arts, uh, arts Commons as well, and um, been also a, a big attender, attendee of the arts. I have no artistic ability, so I just go in and enjoy the work of other people. Um, this is a really, you know, uh, just as a comment from a board perspective, um, and I'll I'll speak in my uh, in my role here at CADA, is that the diversity and issues of diversity and equity and inclusion and access and access have been really it's not a new conversation um, as we all know and on this call. And it's not a new conversation at CADA. I've only been on the board for CADA for a few months, but I can tell you, but I've been, when, in my previous job, when I worked as chief of staff for the mayor, I was, arts was also my file. Uh, and the conversation about equity, inclusion, diversity, and, and, act, and accessibility has been really fundamental at CADA and Calgary Arts Development for a long, long time. And certainly, um, there's always things that need to be improved, but when you take a look at the living a creative life strategy, diversity, um, in, which I was fortunate enough to be on the committee that worked on that, uh, on that strategy, diversity uh, and inclusion was really fundamentally center at it. So I just wanted to say that I think Kate has been attuned to this, certainly uh, um, for a long time. Um, but certainly there's lots more work to do. And I, think, um, and I think there are a lot of structures and a lot of systems that we continually have to look at. And that's one of the thing, conversations that we have at the board level at CADA. We, we know as a funder of arts, we've, we've been shifting, uh, trying to shift funds to support individual artists and make sure we're supporting individual, more individual artists you'll know that a lot of our funds go to uh, large organizations and we've also asked those organizations in our assessment processes to really explain and talk about and be transparent about the things that they're doing. So I think this, I think, um, you know, the events of the last few weeks have, of course, for me as a black man have been incredibly emotional. Um, you know, I, and I think for many of us on this call, uh, it's been, you know, this is a conversation that has, you know, people have been trying to have and, and, um, and, and a lot of frustration that people haven't been listening. And I think, and I think it's a really good time for every institution and every organization to really look at what we are doing um, and making sure we're doing as much as we can. And I think, uh, I can tell you, uh, just as a board member from CADA, we're having those conversations. We're really keen to hear what people have to say on this forum and other forums, and really committed to know that you know nobody is perfect and no organization is perfect, and we're quite committed to working hard to doing better. <laughs> and I'll just say one more thing, and then so I can so we can stop talking. Let you guys talk. <laughs> uh, is that on the arts organizations that I've been on boards of. This is also a conversation I know that happens at, at, that we've had um, at Alberta Theatre Projects um, um, and that we've had at Arts Commons. And I want to tell you that one of the biggest things that we've done in those, those two other organizations and also here at CADA is making sure we've hired leadership at the top that actually understands these issues. And so, you know, both at ATP uh, the leadership of Darcy Evans and and Alex Serian, at our new leader at um, at Arts Commons, both have a really good, solid commitment to these issues, and I think um, we should be really proud that we have those kind of leaders in our community who are willing to listen and do more. So that's all I wanted to say. But uh, happy to answer any questions as they come up. Thanks so much, Chima. And, um, and again, welcoming any questions. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm looking through. Um, any of you who know me know I can fill up an hour. You really sure you want that? You sure? You sure you want me talking? Because I'd love to hear from all of you. Um, 
just checking our messages. and welcoming um, any questions. I'm scanning, I'm scanning. Uh, I have a question here um, that's being sent in by chat. Does CADA plan to work with all levels of funders to further embed requirements for equity, diversity, and inclusion? Uh, and the board level of organizations, both articulating planned actions and having board reporting on progress as part of the annual evaluation. Um, uh, so, uh, Keda, as we work through our processes, uh, yes, um, we are intending to uh, undertake more work and request more information. Um, particularly of our institutions um, with respect to the work that you're undertaking um, concerning equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility. Um, we wanted to undertake conversations. Um, you know, you'll now start to hear me um, talking, uh, crediting JD, um, who's been a great um, accomplice and ally to me. Um, in terms of how I walk in, in, in this path with my identities. And she always reminds me that we have to go to where people are. And so making assumptions that you're going to reach a level or you're going to hit a standard or a target or whatever isn't how you actually create meaning. It's not how you create real change. And so um, over the course of this time and going forward, we want to undertake conversations with communities throughout our sort of roster of, of, of organizations that we work with um, to ensure that you are um, equipped and have the capacity to make the kind of changes and understand why you're making the changes that you are. Um, Three years ago, we embarked on our first equity, diversity, and inclusion um, uh, survey of the sector and particularly the co companies we funded. Um, we got tons of pushback. Lots of people really crabby at why you're asking us and thinking that we were going to punish you for somehow if you gave us the wrong answer. Um, we're not going to presume that we know who is or who isn't working in this realm who does or doesn't have relationships or is building relationships in this community, we want you to be able to tell us that in a true and authentic way. And so we will begin to ask those questions and we, you will start to see it um, um, more intentionally in our work. Um, thank you very much to my team. Um, uh, uh, Ebony Gooden has a question. And I'm looking for Ebony in my screen, or you may want to put it in the chat. Uh, this is Kimberly here. Um, Ebony, I think, is going to sign her, her question. So I just need to pin her video really quickly. OK. Thank you. Oh, I don't have a question. I want it to go back to the discussion of identity and the BIPOC phrase and the AWD phrase. I understand the comment that the person would rather use people as an identifier for all people, but for myself as a black female, that is a strong part of my identity. I'm black, deaf, and female. And there's a story behind that. It's part of my experience in life, my history, my culture, my language, how I move through this world. So identifying those specifics is important. And just a second, I'm just waiting for Landon here, who's also in the chat, just making sure that uh, he can see me as well. So 
getting back to that question, I think it should be up to the individual. Hang on a second. Now I have to go back to the interpreter. Hang on one second. I have to find the interpreter. Okay, I'm sorry. That's really complex. Um, sorry, I was just seeing the captions and watching the interpreter. Okay, so let me go back. Um, so with the BIPOC and the AWD, and just simply terming people as people, I don't agree with that at all. It's up to the individual how they identify themselves, how they prefer to be identified. And for me, I identify as a black deaf female. There's a whole history, culture, and language attached to those identities. And without that, I, I feel that my identity is not complete. There are barriers and discriminations or discrimination on how I've moved through this world. So I think that it's really important that we value how people choose to identify themselves and not remove those labels as was requested. And that's all, thank you. Thank you very much for your comments, Ebony. Um, we have some questions now coming up in the chat box, so I'm going to go through those. Um, um, sorry, it's just taking me a minute here to scroll down. <laughs> okay, so um, a, a comment about the opening statement I read from Calgary Arts Development. My questions are, why now? I understand that you mentioned that this conversation is part of the work by inviting the community to speak. I've personally been raising this topic with CADA for years. What specific areas can you envision changing? How many individuals on the board represent BIPOC communities? So, um, so let me break that down into the different questions. Um, in terms of why now, uh, this is a continuing part. Uh, this is a continuation in our own journey around EDIA. Um, something that uh, someone very wise who has also very generously offered their guidance and advice to us is a man named Cesar Calla. And Cesar is a, a long time uh, uh, um, uh, social justice and um, uh, activist in our community. He's wise um, and uh, has been a wonderful resource to us. And, and something that he said to us earlier is, um, we don't choose the moment, the moment chooses us. So, and in the moment choosing us, it gives us the opportunity to speak and to start something. And so, this is the start of this next part of our journey. Um, I understand that you mentioned this conference by working by Phoenix Speak. Um, we have uh, attempted to have other forums uh, where individuals may speak on a variety of issues, not only uh, what we're talking about today. Citizen Artist YYC is one um, avenue uh, where uh, voice, uh, individuals are, are welcome to be a part of that call. It doesn't uh, necessarily include CADA, although we have artists on our team who participate. Um, we're also um, uh, undertaking other efforts like our, uh, and Kimberly, I'm sorry, Asana Geeks is a Blackfoot term for those who write and draw. And it is a term that was gifted to us by an elder Sakokato, and that is part of a reconciliation journey, of our reconciliation journey, where we also engage artists and commission artists to help us understand um, what reconciliation means for us in this place, in this time. Uh, so we are trying to find different ways 
Um, it sounds to me like we have not found a way for you to be a part of this conversation or to um, um, take part in um, seeing what we're doing. And so I'm um, very conscious of that. And if you're comfortable um, uh, later on sharing um, um, who you are, I'm just seeing an anonymous message here. Um, I would uh, uh, certainly have a, a more conversation with you. Uh, what specific areas do you envision changing? Um, we know our grant investment programs will change uh, for sure and continue to change from where they are now. Um, in our own work, um, it is related to our hiring practices, which we have started to evolve and shape over the last couple of years. Um, it is um, in our board recruitment, you have a question here about how many individuals on the board represent BIPOC communities. Um, uh, uh, you, uh, with regard to um, our board contingent, um, we currently have of uh, 11, uh, one, two, three, sorry, I'm having to go through in my head, um, four out of 12, uh, or five, I'm sorry, five out of 12 um, uh, would be BIPOC and um, AWD. Um, out of a total contingent of 12 uh, uh, going forward. Um, and then we also have an even split between uh, men and women. Um, going through to the next question, um, is there a timeline to when you will have the working group together and a timeline for their outcomes? Uh, we do not currently have a timeline specifically set, however, we um uh this is a priority for us so we are looking to um get underway as quickly as possible as i've mentioned you've heard me talk about jd drew Bishar and cesar Kala. they'll be working with us and helping us um uh, with regard to um uh how we undertake a process that is uh inclusive um Suggestions for arts organization boards to consider as we plan for including diversity as a more sustained set of actions and outcomes for our group. Um, and, and again, for any of you uh, on the team or you may wish to respond in the chat box, uh, the first lesson I learned and I continue to learn it today, I made the mistake today, never assume. And never go after the low-hanging fruit um, and it sounds completely pejorative because it is um, we calgary of all places where we're all connected like talk about six degrees it's often less and our job as organizations particularly dominant culture organizations is to ensure we reach out and we get and we are hearing those communities and those underserved and underrepresented individuals um, who uh, would love, would welcome to be a part of the very organizations that are here in the room today. Um, you know, uh, Patty loves to be asked for all kinds of things, but she's one person. And I did exactly, I made exactly the same mistake today when I was talking about who to have join um, some other efforts. And I instantly went to the first three people I can think of who were the first three people that we all think of. And so it's more work on your part. Look at your distribution lists. Who's missing? It's going to be pretty obvious pretty quickly. That's the first step. And then I hope um, for that CADA can be a facilitator, a connector, um, a bridge uh, to these kinds of questions. Um, we want to work with other city organizations and service organizations like Propellus. Um, they've been working quite some time, that's the formerly the Volunteer Center of Calgary, who are trying to also um, encourage um, uh, uh, BIPOC and people with disabilities to think about their role as as volunteers and so there are many who are thinking this but the real challenge don't make those assumptions don't go after the low-hanging fruit and be 
step out, get out of your comfort zone and try and ask. And you'll be astonished at how welcoming and how inviting um, uh, those questions, those, those kinds of inquiries will be. Um, okay, I think I've answered uh, that question. Um, Patty? Hi, this is Amy Joe. This is just Amy Jo. Um, you've got a hand raised um, from Jenna. Uh, okay, great. Um, thank you so much, uh, Jenna, and then Chima. I actually wanted to make the comment, and if Chima feels free to comment on this, he can. But when I look across the artistic um, like ecosystem, especially in the arts and in theater, I don't see like BIPOC people at the helm. Like, especially like the people at the top, uh, like executive directors or artistic directors. And I think that is a conversation that we need to start having um, because it's fine that like artists are advocating for themselves and that CADA is trying to have like diversity and like um, inclusion conversations, but nothing is gonna change if like at the top, we don't see ourselves represented. And like if the people of power are always making the decisions to hire, to like get those people in those positions that like determine our programming, determining what stories get told, get determining what artists um, get hired, like who gets to be on stages, who gets to be into the major like theater companies. Um, I want to open up the conversation, like a frank conversation about how do we address this problem? Thank you, Ch uh, Jenna. Uh, Chima, do you want to uh, uh, address uh, this question? Um, sure. Or and then lead into your comments? Yeah, I, I, um, I think it's a great question. I think it's, and it's a big issue. I mean, I will tell you that I think recruitment for boards um, needs to be very done very, very deliberately. And that conversation, so anyone who's on a board on this call, um, you know, have this conversation with your board because it, um, you know, it is, critical i mean one of the things i'm really proud of at atp is that we have a divorce a board that actually looks like calgary um with people of color and um, and uh, and a, a gen and gender equality on it um and that's been and that's been done deliberately and it's been done reaching out not for the usual suspects so i think that's the first thing i think the other thing is to those boards also have to ask the question about are we getting diverse pools of candidates for the top jobs um, in the art sector and if you're not you know go back and you know and on one of uh, on one of the boards i've been on where we did some searches we 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 had our, we went to our search firm and said look harder <laughs> you know um you know you know um we want to see we want to see candidates uh, coming forth for these top jobs who are committed to equity diversity. We want to see people from all different backgrounds, uh, you know, you know, coming into our mix. And so I think it's something that just, you know, for needs to be pushed at the board level by the boards and you can, we can, and I think if we do that, we can make a difference. You know, I go to a lot of stuff in Calgary and I, and I have this joke with Patty is like, I, you know, I, we, I sometimes count the number of people who have brown skin in the audience. Um, and often it's not that many. And I, and the city's 33% visible minority. Right. So, and these organize the organizations, if I'm going to a play or I'm going to, um, uh, performance and stuff are receiving money, public money, you know, to support this work. And so, it is my expectation that these organizations are thinking hard about who's on their stage, who are their programming, what stories they're telling, and making sure it's relevant to our community. And I think you'll, you'll see that 
Um, and and um, I think one of the th questions that Patty was asked is why now? I think why not now? I mean, the conversation like suddenly you're having you know this George George Floyd's murder has sparked a conversation amongst non-racialized people that I have not seen um, uh, before, and I think that's I think. I think it's now the opportunity when people are like thinking about what they can do what to be anti-racist and to provide opportunities for other people. Um, it's now is the right time. Thank you very much, Chima. Uh, we have Pamela and Jacqueline, Pamela Zhang and Jacqueline Aquinas. Uh, so. Hi everyone. Oh. Greetings. Um, so my, I'm going to come from my body first <laughs> as an artist and a dancer where like there, I have a lot of deep frustration um, raging inside of me and I'm trying to find a way to constructively <laughs> um, bring forward my questions and concerns. Um, one of them is that um, in response, I believe it was Susan speaking about board members asking about wanting to see boards um, members who are uh, BIPOC is that there is a there is without leadership that is BIPOC we lack trust and um, I think there's a missing piece of having trust and in order to garner the support of folks to volunteer to be on those boards because most BIPOC folks are spread so thin trying to do work in their communities, trying to endlessly attend events so that they are present in white spaces so we are not forgotten. So that is one thing. There's a lot of labor to it and we need to like outright acknowledge that boards aren't supposed to be paid. They can't be paid. Um, but like, it's like, how are we going to address this by, by having leadership and staff that are BIPOC and also like, we need to, I'm going to say the elephant in the room is like, we have institutions that are operating with white supremacist culture and that is just everywhere. And we need to find out and perhaps Kata can have a meaningful role in this to ensure that this is being really addressed um, as Jack, Jax had mentioned somewhere in the chat, like we need policies put in place. A lot of organizations don't have HR policies, um, don't have um, other things put in place that are ensuring that if BIPOC folks, arts professionals are working with them, that they are safe and have a way to report um, discrimination. And that's not okay anymore. It was never okay. And um, another thing is, um, just because we're short on time, I'm going to share something that Jenna shared with me and gave consent to us, which is like, how are we prioritizing funding the members of our community who are most hurting? Um, because again, it's like, there's disproportionate support for um, individuals like um, in institutions and the individuals who are being actually like on the ground and relying on CERB. So um, that's really clear the way that white supremacist culture exists for us in our community. Less question, more statement. Feel free to add. Thank you very much, Pamela. Um, uh, as Pamela mentioned, we're very close to five o'clock and I wanna be mindful of the time. That said, um, I want to, uh, Jacqueline, you indicated that you had your hand raised, so I want to be sure that uh, uh, you can uh, share your comments. So for those of you who might have to leave at five o'clock, thank you very much. But if uh, you can stay on and uh, uh, we'll uh, continue with Jacqueline and um, talk about next steps. Uh, there are many, many more questions here than our time uh, um, ha has allocated today. Um, however, um, I want us to continue this conversation and I want to answer every single question that's been asked of us in a forum like this um, as one way for us to engage with communities. Um, 
So uh, we'll commit to another time. Uh, but before we go there, uh, Jacqueline, can I invite you to um, uh, ask your question or make your comment? And uh, when you uh, come on and start to speak, can you please be sure to introduce yourself uh, so that uh, our guests who are using ASL know who you are? Yes, thank you, Pam, Patty. Um, and thanks, Pam, for that great question. Um, my name is Jacqueline Aquinas. I'm with the Anti-Racist Organizational Change Project through CommunityWise. And I'm also an artist here in Calgary, and I'm on the board as well. Um, and speaking to what uh, Pam was also mentioning as well with other people around accountability, um, in the Black Lives Matter statement of solidarity, it, it says and I, um, like, that you want to further develop anti-racist policies and practices governing our work. But what type of um, public facing commitments to accountability from the recommendations from AROC uh, are you willing to put out there? Because I know from the trainings that I've done with Felicity Letner from AROC, sorry, my throat's really dry. Um, there are recommendations after the six hour trainings. I wasn't there for the K to one last year, um, but I'm wondering how, like after the trainings, what do you do with those recommendations and how does that change the culture within the organization from the inside out? Um, because it is organizational change that changes culture and shifts how funders respond to uh, requests and, and create RFPs for the communities and pretty much dictate how um, artists will respond to uh, what you put out there for uh, what is defining equity. Thank you so much uh, for the question, Jacqueline. Um, so, uh, with regard to uh, what the work has been, I think you're right. It is about, you need to change inside the system and inside the organizational culture. And uh, with regard specifically to the, to the workshop that we did with Tullesey, um, and we hope to continue um, with our own, with our, our board and other um, organizations, uh, it's about formalizing those kinds of conversations within our own context, within our own work, embedding um, the, the recommendations that have come through or come from AROC um, and applying it. And, and always in the beginning, it feels very weird and it feels so kind of foreign and it's not intended to be. But, you know, if ever there was a place, but in the arts where practice, 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 comes into play. It is around this, you know, and, and what I said earlier about stepping out. Um, you know, we, we undertook a hiring process and discovered partway through that we were only attracting those from a dominant culture. And so we stopped the process. We put a pause in place and we undertook conversations with others in the community who we knew were um, uh, uh, connected to communities that we didn't have connection to, uh, particularly Indigenous communities. And we paused that process and then subsequently uh, 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 reinvigorated or renewed the process um, on our way to uh, uh, um, hiring uh, that role and then subsequently other roles. And, and, and sure enough, people applied who never ever thought they could ever get a job at CADA or didn't know that that was a possibility for them to have a job at CADA um, uh, that wasn't the most junior lowest um, uh, job in the organization. Um, I think it makes a difference that you see a CEO who is a person of color um, in the role and speaking about these, these um, kinds of things. So, you know, certainly both what Pamela and, and Jacqueline have said here is true. Like, as much as we may have people who um, are allies and accomplices around EDIA, you, you know, and, and I'm sure you're all saying it to yourself, until I see me on that stage or in that office or around that board table, then, there, then this isn't about me, ever. Until I see that, until I hear from those people, then this isn't about me. And that's what we have to change. And for those of you who are in systems where you know there is inequity, you know that there is um, 
a, a, a disparate proportion of um, uh, you know, white older men. Um, uh, you have to embrace that and understand that in your organization and understand why in your organization. And until you actively seek out others from other communities, this isn't going to work. So that's what you're hearing from this CEO in this organization, knowing that this organization still has work to do. Um, so uh, I think in, in that respect, we are at 506. And again, I, I see all kinds of questions here. Uh, one thing I will commit to you is we are documenting these questions. Members of the team have been sending me um, uh, all kinds of notes and questions that have been coming up in the chat. As I said earlier, we are recording uh, this chat, so we will send it out, uh, or sorry, we'll, we'll, we will post it to our website, uh, minus the private uh, 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 chat questions, but we will track uh, all of those questions. And uh, as a team, um, July 2nd, which is a Thursday, um, we are going to reconvene for a town hall again. Um, and continue to go through the questions that people have here. Um, uh, there may be new questions and new faces that take part in that call. And uh, we are calling upon JD and Cesar um, uh, to work with us in how we might design a more inclusive process um, and format uh, for July 2nd and whatever subsequent future conversations we want to have that the community wishes to have with us so if july 2nd we don't get through all the questions then we'll schedule another one and then we'll do another one after that and we'll keep doing it until everybody's questions get answered in the meantime we will be working uh, forward with regard to the working group so please stay tuned as we um uh um uh, work our way through uh, how that that group will form and um, uh, there was one other thing and it just went out of my head. So I'm kind of pausing, I'm kind of uh, delaying while I try to remember what it is. I'll think of it. Um, uh, but uh, we want to uh, uh, always continue this conversation. Um, I'm just doing a quick scan of the, the chat and um, uh, my teammates here, if there's anything that I missed, I'm looking in my notes to make sure I feel like I missed something um, here, but I, it, it's feeling like I got it. Um, is it possible to leave this room open for people to continue to chat with each other? Um, Amy Jo, can you help me with that one? Yes, I can. Um, I just have to figure out how to make it so you guys can unmute yourselves and uh, continue this conversation kind of self-driven. Um, so give me a few minutes, please. Um, and uh, Jenna's saying she thinks we can unmute himself. Terrence is raising a hand in the video. So um, for those of you who are able to stay on and want to continue the conversation. Um, do you want me to stay in the call and continue to be a part of this conversation? Because I will. I can. And it's totally fine if you say no. I got a, I got a yes. Okay, so I will stay in on the call. Um, and uh, continue to um, have these conversations. And again, I, I'd invite all of you. Um, I think that if I stay on the call, um, I can uh, um, unmute people if we need to unmute people. And also, um, I would really welcome uh, n not me talking, but you. Like, I, I would really like to know what you want Kata to hear and um, have it be a lot less of me kind of doing the talking. I can, keep, I can try, do my best to try and keep track of hands. Um, you, and as you can see, I'm not super good at it, but I will try. Um, but I'd rather hear from you if that's okay. 
I'm just going to interject with some tech stuff. You should be able to unmute yourselves now. Um, I hope. Can somebody test? Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, um, hello. And um, if anybody still wants to join in, you still need to uh, uh, register um, just because we don't want to get any Zoom bombers in here. Um, so if somebody is asking to, to get a link in, just get them to register on um, that website that you registered on, and I will be approving them as they come in as I've been going. So hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit more technically. Okay, Amy Jo, thank you so much. So um, uh, uh, if I can, well, not if I can, I will. So I will formally and the proceedings of uh, the town hall so that those of you who have to go um, uh, can go. Uh, please again accept my sincere thank you for joining us today in what is the beginning of um, um, this leg of the journey. Uh, and um, I'm just checking in with Kimberly. Um, I don't know if you're able to stay in the event that there may be members who still want to make use of ASL. We will leave the otter.ai uh, live stream um, uh, closed captioning still going, um, but that's not always the best way. Uh, thanks, Ebony has to go. Um, Landon may be making use. I don't know, Landon, if you're able to stay or not. Landon had to go back on the road. Okay, so um, is there anybody else who's staying on the call who would like for us to continue to have our ASL interpreter? Just checking the chat box. Uh, not seeing anybody, am I missing anybody? No, okay, then, um, uh, Kimberly, if you're still here, thank you so much. And if you're not here, I'm still thanking you anyway. And uh, okay, so we're all still here. And there's still a lot of us. So let's continue um, uh, our question. And um, and 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 if we could, if I could, uh, maybe make a request that I maybe kind of step back for a bit and just hear from you and listen from you about what you want Kata to hear. What do you need from Kata? Um, that would be really helpful. And if it's more information about Kata, that's great. But I'd, I'd like to hear all of those things if I might. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, hi there. And hi. can you just tell us who you are? Yeah, uh, my name is Terence, but I go by uh, uh, stage name DJ Stages. I'm uh, new to Calgary. I actually moved out of a small town, Pincher Creek, uh, about a year ago. And um, uh, so here I am. I just have a, com a couple of comments and also questions. You spoke about the black community and uh, coming out of Pincher Creek, I didn't even know there was a black community because as the people who have been disenfranchised, disenfranchised for a long time. We, I didn't even know. I mean, I'm not, I can only speak for myself. I didn't even know there was a black community. And uh, when I moved here, I actually moved to a white neighborhood. So every time a black person walks by, I go, like, oh, there's another bus. Anyways, uh, it's um, when you speak about communities, there are established communities, but there's a lot of us who are independent artists and somehow struggling so much to just keep our heads above the water. It's, my question and comment is, when you speak about a black community, are you talking about those that are already established or are you also looking to work with those who, I know you are working with those who are independent, but independent, but how, what, what would be in place to uh, address the people who are not in a particular community or at least a non-particular community? And then the other thing is that I'm a black person, but I also have a lot of diversities within me uh, because as we as you know the black lives matter the movement is so diverse it's got a lot of uh, connotations one of the things that i noticed about the few black people that i know in calgary is that we are also 
totally different. So I do a podcast to explain the diversity. It's called Ancient African Wisdom, which is a way of letting people know our ancient history that unites us. So is there a way as black artists or as people of uh, African descent who can contribute to the, to the narrative of how we are perceived in a way that is uh, so diverse? Because I think that me as a black person, I'm sometimes so different from another black person, but yet we share a common general treatment. So those are my two comments and my questions as well. Thanks so much, Terrence. Um, I'll try to uh, answer these questions shortly so we can open up and, uh, and hear more. Um, by virtue of you being here, Terrence, I hope, I hope you, you will feel comfortable reaching to Kada at any time you have questions about um, the community at large. And we will do our best to um, welcome you with open arms and connect you. Um, if there are others who you know of who do not currently have a connection with us, uh, please let us know. Um, uh, and, and if there are other organizations or other um, uh, ways in which artists are coming together in the communities you travel in uh, that we should be reaching out to, please let us know. Um, but we, we don't have any um, particular way and we don't have a particular de definition of who the Black community is. We hope you tell us that. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, people are asking for your podcast link. So can you um, put it in the chat box, please? Sure, sure. Thanks so much. Um, I see, I saw Jacqueline has her hand up and um, I thought that Jenna did as well. If, uh, am I right on that, Jacqueline and Jenna? Jenna had to dip out. Oh, okay, Jacqueline? I think Anne was raising her hand a while ago as well. Who was Anne? Yeah. Okay, so Jacqueline and then Anne. Hi, yeah. Um, oh, Jacqueline first. Oh, Jacqueline. Go, go, go. Okay. <laughs> um, my question is, uh, what is the board's um, and Kata's leadership perspective on what the current inequities in the arts community are? Just because um, I'd like to know, have a basis of understanding about um, like whether the strategies are aligned with what you think are the inequities. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, hey, Jordan. Um, uh, so, um, 2017, we undertook an equity, diversity, and inclusion survey. Not a perfect instrument and a very blunt one, uh, to, to be honest. Um, but that was the beginning of us trying to get some sense or some kind of a baseline of where the community that we were particularly um, working with, and so, and the obvious example is granting to, uh, fell. Um, the art sector, so I'm just reading uh, um, uh, uh, what I have uh, noted here. Uh, the art sector is less ethnically diverse than the population of Calgary. The representation of visible minorities is 15% in the sector, which is less than half of the representation of visible minorities in Calgary. And I can send this to you or I can put it in the chat box if that's helpful. Um, Individuals who identify with impairments are underrepresented within the sector. Individuals identifying as uh, uh, deaf or deaf or hard of hearing with a disability and or with a mental illness show lower rates of representation compared to local or national statistics. The LGBTIQ plus, sorry, IQ2S plus community is well represented in the arts sector relative to national estimates of LGBTIQ2S plus members of the population. Gender, age, and ethnicity all show relationships to levels and sources of income. Significant differences in income are present between transgender, gender fluid, gender non-conforming, and female respondents compared to male identified respondents. Visible minorities report lower levels of income less income from arts work and more likelihood of their arts earning coming from outside Calgary. Age is related to income with older respondents reporting higher income and more national or international income than those who are just beginning their careers. So that 
uh, was the starting point for us in terms of our uh, work on the uh, equity, diversity and inclusion survey in 2017. Um, included within that as well, we had asked that um, respondents also send the survey out to their volunteers and that included board and non-board volunteers. And again, we saw um, uh, uh, a, a deep inequity um, with regard to the comparison to the representation in Calgary or the makeup of Calgary. So we also know that at a board level, um, uh, there is uh, an inequity uh, of representation happening there. And then um, uh, I don't think we asked this question specifically, but we know that anecdotally, if you were to look at the leadership in organizations across the sector, there is an inequity. There is not uh, a representation um, equivalent to Calgary. And I'm, I'm using that as one measure. It doesn't have to be the only measure, but I think as we, particularly as we're working with institutions um, who may be find themselves in this situation, you need to start somewhere and ask yourself something about relative to X, how are we as Y? And that's one measure you can use. Um, and then as we continue through the intersectionality and the many different identities that any one of us carries with us in time, those come into play as well. Um, uh, the, uh, Greg is reminding me that in the surveys of board and leadership positions, they skew significantly male and white. So these are the kinds of things that we have to raise. And, and someone asked it earlier about, are we working with other levels of funders? And um, I'm happy to say, yes. Do I feel like they're as intentional as we are in trying to say this out loud, trying to have this conversation that includes all of us who may find ourselves in those skewed situations? I'm not so sure. We continue to have the talk. Um, we continue to, to work on many fronts. And then where we can break through, we break through. So is that your question, Ann? You're muted. Yeah, it's a good start. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, uh, Jacqueline. Thanks for the question, and and um, I'm just wondering when was the last time that um, the strat plan and the the mission statement and values were revisited to speak to the training or recommendations to like from a rock because if if we're starting with the solidarity statement like to launch into this new vision of a future that's going to shift the culture. Um, it has to start from the values that CADA is going to share and dictate any programming, any um, any reflection in, in communications and hiring. And I'm just wondering if that's going to be shifted in the near future, because um, we all understand organizational change. And I'm seeing here, I'm just going to say one more thing here, because I'm also seeing in some of these chat notes and comments from people that um, there still is a resistance in understanding that systemic racism is a thing and that white supremacy is actually a thing because I was also in talks with Mark Neufeld yesterday with the CPS, the chief who's still on the fence about white supremacy being actually equivalent to racism. Um, so I don't know if there's also, not just internally, is that gonna be um, examined but also in capacity building, because we can go through an entire grade K to 12 education in Calgary and not ever talk about white supremacy. And I, know, I don't know, it's not the responsibility of CADA, but I mean, if, we're, if you're giving money to people who don't understand what you stand for, it might be a challenge in buy-in from the community. Mm -hmm. 
Thanks, uh, uh, Jacqueline, for the question. Uh, when you see me looking the other way, it's because my notes are that way and I'm just typing so that I, I can remember things. Um, and Teresa, I, Teresa Whoop, I see your hand is up as well. Um, in terms of uh, revisiting our strategy, so we have a four-year strategy. Every year we come up with a work plan, so every year we re-review that strategy. With regard to the values and principles that we have, um, there are three that we don't currently have listed in the strategy that supersede everything that we do. And my hope is that with the working group, as we put our statement, uh, our, our commitment to equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility, those three principles will be featured in that. Uh, one size fits one, not about us without us, perpetuating virtuous cycles, not vicious cycles. And so those three working principles while we haven't published them and we intend to, they are present in how we make decisions and how we undertake our work. Um, uh, as you said yourself, Jacqueline, the conversation that you had with Mark Newfeld yesterday is exactly the conversations that I often have um, with other leaders in the community. And, um, and we keep having those conversations. My, you know, I appreciate you saying it, it's not that all CADA, that CADA has to do this or that it's our responsibility. <clears throat> I think, however, as we learn more and as we increase our understanding, it does have to become our responsibility. We can't learn all of this and then not do anything with it and not try to um, uh, institute that very change that that you're speaking to. Uh, so um, uh, I, I think that as we continue to review our strategic and working plans that all of this comes into play. Um, one uh, change that we've uh, made with our board of directors, for example, um, our board meetings used to be Patty's CEO report, she would talk about the EDIA stuff. Well, EDIAA will now have its own agenda item for all of our board meetings uh, going forward uh, right after our, uh, starting with the meeting after our AGM on June 23rd. So again, formalizing and embedding these practices into um, our own work and our own practices is one way that we can show um, how we're trying to change our own way in which we work. So. It's the walk the walk piece, right? And not just talk the talk. Um, does that answer your question, Jacqueline? Yeah, we got work to do. And I would welcome your continued um, um, uh, advice. Um, uh, uh, Teresa Wupa, you wanted to make a statement or ask a question? Uh, if I may just um, uh, uh, say a few words, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I, I'm hearing, um, I think, uh, today's conversation um, from mostly from people who are ready for a higher level of work uh, in, in, in this area. Uh, Oops. Sorry. How did we lose you? There we go. Try again. Did that work? Okay, is it okay now? There we go, sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'd just like to say that uh, I applaud the work of CADA and, and also the leadership that CADA have been taking. Um, I don't know whether CADA is going to move forward on this work uh, alone or with the city because uh, you know you do have a, a relationship with the city. If we look at uh, what Montreal did yesterday with, with the, the, the city council um, you know, making a statement uh, with a very, um, uh, extensive report called the uh, Montreal Racism Report that most of the racialized community support, which is very rare. Uh, and um, I don't know whether CADA would be moving forward alone or with the city or with other people. Uh, what I would like to say is um, as you, as we move forward, we need to uh, build on our previous work, our previous experience and learnings. Um, and, uh, and like I said in the very beginning, I'm hearing that uh, most people here uh, are talking about not from starting from 
you know, building understanding doing diversity training. I'm so glad. And um, so uh, what, 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 what are our previous work? I saw David S. was here earlier. Um, I started co-facilitating the cross-cultural uh, training for police in Calgary in 1986. 1986. And um, uh, I was doing presentation for the Calgary Board of Education in 1985. And uh, I was part of the United Way Multicultural, we drop anti-racism, organizational change uh, process, 1991. The Calgary Health Region did the barrier analysis, 1993. Calgary had our social experiment of the Diversity Calgary Leadership Council, 2000. Uh, and that was with everybody, police, school board, United Way, the city of Calgary, the province. Sustainable Calgary report, if, uh, every time they report, underrepresentation of um, racialized uh, Canadians, Calgarians. We have a fair Calgary policy. We have a welcoming and inclusive community policy at the municipal and provincial level that most people don't know about. People never talk about, maybe never even reference to. And uh, so um, I, I think that um, I challenge those who actually say that uh, anything that's more than two years old or five years old is outdated. We spend millions of dollars on those initiatives. We need to learn why they did not work and what, what did work. And, uh, and why is it that we did not see a lot of change? And how can we do things differently, learning from those attempts? And I still think that there, there many of those were good attempts, but I think that we need to actually talk about them. A lot of these organizations don't even want to mention. I want to ask why. So I think, that, um, uh, I think that we need to actually learn uh, uh, and build on our, our previous work uh, as we move, move forward. So that's what I have to say today. Thank you, Penny. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, and uh, I uh, just saw in the chat box, people are asking who is that speaking? So again, when you make your comments, if you wouldn't mind just telling us uh, who you are, if you're comfortable doing that, I'd uh, appreciate that. Um, I'm scanning through, scanning, scanning. Someone can tell me if there's a hand up that I haven't seen yet. Um, did, have, I, have I missed anybody in the chat so far? I'm looking up the chat. Um, you know, I, I'm wondering if Kata could share the ways it is formalizing and embedding EDIA into its own practices, lessons learned on an ongoing basis going forward so other organizations can learn from the process. There's a hand up. It's, uh, is it Mbo? M? Mbo? Yeah. Thank you. Mbo, do you want to speak? And am I pronouncing uh, it Yes, no, that's not correct, but that's all right. Um, no, it's not actually. Yeah. Please tell me. So <laughs> that's totally fine. So my name is Mpoe. Um, Mpoe, thank you. It's lovely. Um, and I've done work in EDIA for a very long time, and I've noticed trends where this is a comment, but it will a question will come after. So I've noticed trends where they are. Uh, moments such as these right, these ones right now, and there's a response from our communities and everything. However, that dies down after a while. So, um, like Teresa just mentioned right now, the various initiatives that have been um, built upon over years, but nothing really, like the fact that we have to come after a couple of years to have meetings such as this is quite frustrating, especially those like, I'm, I do not wait for a moment like this to experience racism, right? It's every day in my life. So it's quite frustrating that it comes to the gaze of white folks at particular times and then it fades away. So what my question is, is around accountability and what is going to be different this time? Because I would hate for another George Floyd to be killed, another Regis Paquette to be killed, for us to be here again. So I'm wondering with Kada, with 
what will be different this time. The survey was helpful and everything. Uh, so how do we continue this momentum? And in terms of community, um, so it was mentioned that the community will be the ones that inform uh, how we move forward. I'm wondering how uh, that community is not, like we don't continuously extract from communities and we go to them, to, we, revisit, we revisit them to ask, are we on the right path? That is something that I often see missing in EGAI is that we start, um, we extract, but don't necessarily follow through with the community and check if, hey, is this working out or not? So that is my question. It's around accountability. And I just wanted to reiterate it again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mpoi. Did I say it right that time or closer? Yes, closer, yeah. Mpoi, okay, I'm gonna practice that. Thank you. Um, uh, at the risk of having this sound like a cop-out, um, with regard to accountability and what's going to be different this time, I guess one thing I would, I would say is in order, in, in the context of trying to make it different this time, rather than I assume, I know what the signs of accountability would look like to you, I'd like to ask you, what should those things be that we can be held accountable to, right? Because I can come up with a plan and it just becomes another plan in a vacuum with one perspective in a silo. And to your point about extracting from the communities, right, that the same 100 people get called upon and then they never see the follow through. How That for sure is something I've heard. And so we need to be sure that we always come back to those communities we've called upon um, and make sure they know what we're doing how we're progressing or regressing as the case may be. Um, but I, I, I would welcome um, others um, to tell, if, if there are things that you want to see that you know right now, um, I would welcome that. You know, I am hearing for sure a, a, a change in the makeup of who we fund and how we grant. Um, uh, I'm hearing certainly our board makeup and our staff contingent to continue to be representative of our communities that we are here to serve. Um, what else? Uh, there's in the chat here from Jacqueline to publish the recommendations from AROC and commit to them with a timeline. Okay. Thanks, Jacqueline. Um, there's a question in the chat uh, asking if anyone on this call has been successful in getting predominantly white boards of directors to examine white supremacy and institutional racism and actually change the makeup of our boards. Um, and so, and this person's asked to remain anonymous. Um, I'm throwing that out to the group. That's a pretty deafening silence, hey? Um, next board call, I, I'd recommend having the only, like a major requirement, either lived experience of equity seeking, um, like a, a, a being an equity, equity seeking person, uh, whether it's a, uh, AWD or as a BIPOC person, um, oh, and also doing the work, have, have, like a person who has been doing the work in anti-racism, in equity, in EDI, and not just diversity inclusion, because I find that rather harmful. If you've seen the COCO from Montreal, excellent standard of uh, anti-racism. Um, if you've seen that problem woman of, woman of color, um, just diagram, if you just Google that right now, COCO, I'm just gonna put that in there, COCO problem woman of a color, where you have one racialized, either black 
or indigenous person in an organization who has to drag an organization towards equity or speak to any of their lenses and then they get burned out because it's always a push against a system that is not made safe for them. So start fresh. Wipe your boards clean so that you have everybody speaking the same shared language around equity, around anti-racism. And everybody understands what you're up against because this system isn't going to change without tearing it down first. I, I, literally, you can't rebuild the system with the master's tools. It has to be wiped clean so that you can start with people who speak this, like who understand this and see that the people who are seeking equity are, be, are, are not just looking for diversity, are not just looking for a wedge to open up for them to fit into. It has to be a place where they're safe, where everybody else is supporting them from the leadership and out to the front lines. That's my recommendation. Thank you very much. And, and as Jacqueline has indicated earlier, um, the, the workshops of AROC are really great. There are resources available to organizations um, who want to get on this path, um, who want to learn more. Uh, we're seeing in the chat box, uh, Bow Valley College Diversity on Board um, uh, can offer uh, um, uh, capacity. Um, having taken part in the anti-racism workshops of AROC, uh, they're really great. Um, you, excuse me, there are um, resources like White Fragility and Me and White Supremacy that um, uh, uh, people in the dominant culture can read and work through. This is a learning journey. Um, and I know a question has come up from Alex. And thank you uh, for your question. Uh, how do you address pushback when introducing diversity, inclusion, equity, and accessibility in your organizations, specifically accusations of performative diversity? It's been suggested in my organization that the best form of inclusion is not showing particularly, particularity to a particular group. This was brought up specifically in regards to pride, but I think it can be applied elsewhere. Absolutely it can. And I mean, <sighs> For those of us in the BIPOC, like, let's just be real here. We know, we know when it's tokenistic, when it's performative, and when it's real. And as, um, you know, someone who uh, uh, guided us in um, our work here, your actions will show your leadership. Your actions will show your intention. And so, you know, I think we are living in a time, and for those of you who may be affiliated with organizations who are finding yourselves in this place of uh, absence of representation, uh, I don't know, someone else tell me if you're seeing the signs differently than me, but you are going to get called out. Someone is going to call you out. And that may be CADA. We are going to question and ask you. And I know that my community investment team is, you know, working very hard to, to find the ways for us to do that. We've been talking about this for years. And, um, it, you know, we're, I keep describing CADA as a public steward of public dollars for the interests of the public good. And that includes all Calgarians, not some. And right now, you can see in our systems that they favor some Calgarians, not all. And so as a public agency, if I can't commit to that, if we can't do that, then there's something really wrong. And guess what? Here we are two years later, as Mpoy said, I'm still going to practice that, two years to have this conversation. I've been in the gig since 2013. If anybody can have the conversation, it should be me. And I can't, mm -hmm. and I didn't. So um, I would really encourage uh, um, those of you who are finding yourselves at these crossroads or finding yourselves in, in positions of leadership, whether it's on the board or the staff, um, to uh, challenge yourselves and to not make those assumptions and to know that I believe as public funders, we will be changing our practices in the days to come. And you don't want to be left behind. 
I don't uh, know. More honest I can be. Hands. Somebody else has their hand up? Two, two hands, Pamela and, and Poe. Thank you. So we'll go to Pamela and then Mpoi. Hi, everyone, again. Um, thank you for holding space for my thoughts. Um, so I'm just thinking about actionable items um, mm -hmm. that might be able to be crafted by the EDIA group, working group. Hopefully they're paid, um, is my. Yes, they will be. Thought. Um, is a best practice in um, engaging with BIPOC artists. Um, and um, because I think that the reality, unfortunate, and what is my personal experience is, as I mentioned, there's so much emotional labor in trying to um, communicate, communicate what is problematic that um, it's exhausting and there should just be something to be like, if you want to consult with a BIPOC artist about what is problematic, then this is a standard fee that you should be paying them to consult with. Just like that's really kind of a dramatic thing, but I think there are possibilities um, to set a standard by having a living document um that Kaden might be able to play a role in just kind of like an advocacy or service organization which we don't have here like we have you which is i also want to say that like as an artist here i feel like Kaden has done some really incredible work and that is it's singular in canada really um and so that's exceptional and that these conversations of holding account Kaden account and just pushing forward is just wanting more <laughs> um <laughs> we all want more to do better and be better and be resilient and and so i just want to say that uh thank you <laughs> pamela and then uh employ employ man i gotta work on that i'm sorry did you have a comment No, nope, sorry, I must have raised my hand accidentally. I do not have anything to say. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, to uh, Pamela's comment about a fee with regard to the working group, the EDIA group, uh, we will commission and compensate. We um, certainly as independent contractors uh, for many of you, um, uh, and, and as I've said in other avenues, if I'm asking, if I'm calling upon your expertise, I pay for that like I pay for a lawyer or a doctor or um, anybody else who is offering us the expertise that they have garnered from their practice. So that's what we're gonna be asking. Um, it has to be equitable with what white call consultants make, not an honorarium. So uh, JD has just had a comment there. Um, About I, just, I just want to say it's not a particularly difficult thing to figure out. The consulting industry has been around forever. I'm a consultant. There are fees. They vary from nonprofit to profit, but they are pretty standard across. They're, they're, this is not difficult. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, do we have... Cesar, you're doing a better job than I am of keeping track of people who got hands raised. Um, are you seeing? I know, I know. That's why. Anybody? I'm scanning. Yeah. Scanning. I'm scanning as well. But... I'm looking in the chat. Um, uh, I do have a short comment though, if I can. Okay, thank you. I, I'm going back to <clears throat> the discussion around accountability, measurability, and change. Um, and there are many suggestions like uh, looking at board membership and HR and so on. It might be good to really look at what are incremental and what are transformational. Because oftentimes, 
when when people talk about what can we do oftentimes people talk about incremental things with the with with the assumption that if you do enough incremental stuff they may eventually be transformational which probably is not the case right so what are some of the transformational changes that we can look at and these are not a lot but but in themselves are deep enough to transform both an organization, an institution, or a particular situation, right? So part of our part of our thinking in probably in the next little while is to zero in on the transformational stuff. Right? The second thing I want to say as well is that you know, CADA is still a public institution attached to the municipality, attached to other established institutions, right? So the question is how far can you push CADA without also transforming where CADA gets its money, where CADA gets its mandate, and where CADA gets its kind of contextual location in Calgary, right? So, so I think we shouldn't kind of, but what the point I'm saying is that if we're really looking for transformational change, then we need to look at the bigger picture, right? So that's why I think the work that we do both as activists and artists is also quite looking at the comprehensive picture, right? How do we help transform the political kind of culture and institutions that surround CADA, right? That's a bigger deal. So that's why I think solidarity is so important with others who are doing similar work targeting other institutions and other contexts. Anyway, I'll stop there. Thank you very much, Cesar. Um, and I think um, to Cesar's comment and to a question that Teresa asked earlier about, will CADA work with the city? Um, some of you may be aware that uh, Monday night, because it's Wednesday, uh, the City Council passed a, policy, um, a, a motion uh, concerning anti-racism and the work that they would be doing inside uh, City Hall. Um, and I would encourage um, uh, uh, any opportunity that you may have as the city rolls out its activities uh, to uh, participate. Um, uh, CADA will certainly be trying to share the information and we are bringing back um, our learnings uh, as we report to our shareholder city council. So that's an ongoing um, relationship that we are trying to um, continue to foster. Um, and where we can influence, we will try. Uh, thank you. And as all of you are already seeing and likely already knew Cesar is so wise and he is such a wonderful treasure um, in our com community. I wish that Canada was like Korea where Korea, South Korea identifies artists in particular as national treasures of their country. And I think Cesar should be a national treasure for our city. Um, uh, for all that uh, that he does in, in our community. And there are so many uh, like him, many who are on this call today. So thank you so much for that. Um, are there other questions, um, other comments uh, that people wanna share? Maybe there's a advice that you might be seeking from others, similar to the question we got from the individual about how do I have this conversation with my board? Or how do I make the distinction between one thing or the other. And um, I, I hope that uh, Cato might be a place where you can ask us those questions anytime, not just on calls like this. Uh, I hope that we can be that. Uh, Cole, you have your hand up. 
Hey, everyone. Hello. Um, hi, Patty. Uh, thanks. I, I actually just want to start by sharing just a little appreciation over the last few months, actually. I, I've grown to so deeply appreciate uh, the work of so many people, including, uh, and is so evident in this call, Pam and Jax for just, I, I'm, I'm constantly inspired by, by your commitment and your work. Um, Cesar as well, uh, particularly for the insights I've gotten into the interdependence of, of the communities that you work with, uh, and JD as always. Um, but hey, Patty, so I'm curious, uh, as, as, we, as we get into evening time, um, I, I'm curious what you feel like Kata's, Kata's ceilings are. Like, where, where do you feel like you'll get pushed back from this work? Because I do sincerely believe in, in your belief and your, your willingness and um, dedication to this work. But I also know that, you know, you have folks above you that may push back or that may respond or, or folks uh, that we know that may try to go over you uh, to, to curtail some of these efforts. I know I, I've appreciated in, in, our, in our grant correspondence that you do open doors for arts organizations to be vulnerable and to talk about challenges and, and failures. And I'm curious from a CADA perspective where you see those challenges for yourself, what, where, what, what you see your limitations are and how we as a, a broader coalition and community can have a part in, in furthering that work. Um, well, thank you for that question. Um, as I said earlier, I think that by virtue of who we are as an organization and that I am sitting in this role in this time, uh, in this chair, uh, CADA has an opportunity um, to be that kind of organization that I think all of us are all talking about in a variety of ways. Um, I will say that the challenges I face probably aren't big surprises to you. They are um, uh, as uh, particularly as a, an organization, we have a spectrum of understanding and learning when it comes to EDIA work, uh, particularly on our board where we see turnover. We're always bringing in new people and new voices and new perspectives and, um, and I think somebody uh, said it earlier about you know getting extracted from right that that you get tired of hearing your own voice say the same things over and over again and what I forget is well it's not always the same audience or it isn't always the same group of people that we're having these conversations about or with um, so the challenges are you know 95 percent plus of our our funds come from the city of Calgary as approved by city council through a process that is with administration in a different department of arts and culture and civic partners and other areas and a set of directors and a city manager and a deputy manager and a mayor and so who all are all and as they commented in the um council meeting on monday i don't know if any of you had a chance to watch it they're on their own place in the spectrum and it ain't way far down the road and many of them know that so we are working within a system that they have now acknowledged has systemic racism has bias um, and is really rooted in we have to know and um, and we can't rely on trusting others to know and tell us that they know. And so we work, so working within a, a, a large civic institution like that is, is a ceiling for us. Um, within our own organization, there are ceilings, there are different levels of understanding on the board in particular um, that we are now formalizing. And I'm really, I'm really grateful to, uh, those on our board who are really working with us to expand that understanding and that knowledge. Um, I think some of them are still on the call here. Um, uh, I think that within our granting, you all know um, 
You know, there are some institutions that have been receiving grants from us for over 60 years in terms of municipal funds, right? And that isn't to say that they should or shouldn't continue to receive grants, but those companies have had to undertake a variety of changes in systems all over the place and have still had the opportunity to continue to receive their operating grant over 60 years. And there are those who have been waiting 15 years, 20 years, 25 years to get on the roster because we hadn't seen increases uh, uh, significant enough to, to have those organizations come in. So I know I have systems. I have embedded expectations. I I'm saying all these things in the spirit of being open and transparent. We have entitlement. Um, and we have this much when we know there's this much need and demand in the community and so as much as we try to work in a spirit of abundance i would argue and i i please someone contradict me disagree with me i believe by and large the sector operates in a place of scarcity and it's been imposed on you on us in many ways um, but back to if perpetuating a virtuous cycle is what we want to do, then I'd invite you to consider that thinking of who we are and where we live today and what we have before us as a city, there is abundance. Granted, there's a big gap between those who have way more abundance and those who have virtually none. Um, but as a sector, I think we have to change. There's a mindset in the sector. And we got, we got to change that. That's where I call upon those like you, Cole, and others uh, to help me understand because I don't know how to do that. And CADA for sure can't do that alone. Those are the things that come off the top of my head. Um, uh, we're at 6.02, so I just want to do a check-in. That's two hours. Um, how about we go 15 more minutes to six, well, I guess 13 more minutes. Um, and, uh, and then we could probably all use a uh, after this conversation. Um, many thanks to all of you who are having to um, uh, sign off. I know people have to go, so I want to make sure that we, we do that. Uh, know that, again, July 2nd, uh, we will resume our, our conversations and we'll, we'll get the information out to you sooner. I appreciate all of you who had to change your days, change your plans in order to uh, join us. I appreciate that. Uh, does anybody else have hand up? Any comments, any closing comments you want to make? Anything you want to make sure I hear that we hear at CADA? Uh, you can see that I've had a number of our CADA teammates still stay with us on the call. So, uh, we'll be sure to be sharing our notes with each other after uh, today. Call us his hand up. I'm not sure if that was the previous one, but I think he forgot to lower his hand. And Anne Flynn as well. All right. Uh, so, well, let's go to Anne Flynn, and then Cole can either lower his hand or keep it up if he still has another comment. Thanks, Cole. Anne, where are you? Unmute. There we go. Hello. Let me, um, sorry, I was going to try to find my camera. Let me, know. oh, here we go. Start video. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for organizing this. I, I just found out about it at the last minute, and I'm really so grateful that I was able to just hear these conversations. I just think they're so important. And I just want to loop back to something that Teresa uh, said, because as someone of her generation, clearly by the dates that she mentioned, um, who's done, uh, you know, so much work, that we um, really reach back into the processes that have already, like she said, so many millions of dollars were invested in these processes and she had multi-sector participation in these things. I think that, you know, failure is such a great teacher. And so I think not to go backwards to be able to look at what were the kinds of things that worked and what were the kinds of things that didn't work so that we're not experimenting when people have already learned so much from those processes that we just don't need to waste our time doing that again. 
and that we just bring forward that work rather than not doing that work. And, you know, because of, I was of a generation, you know, who was fighting for the inclusion of women. So that's, that's really where I come into, you know, the, the inclusion that you probably, it's hard to even remember a time, even though there's obviously still struggles, but there's, it gets hard to remember a time when women weren't, weren't allowed to be invited to the table. Um, in the 1970s, the American Psychological Association um, put out a policy statement saying, you must use gender neutral language. And that was the end of the use of he as the term that stood for all of humankind. Now, people don't remember that, but when you make, a, like, that's the kind of transformative step, I think, that, that Cesar was talking about. That meant that anyone getting a graduate degree, anyone in undergraduate education, was simply no longer able to get away with using he for representation of everyone. And gender neutral language became a standard codified part of the APA manual, the MLA manual, and that's it. And, and everyone just got with the program and mankind went away and humankind came in and those kinds of changes. So that was only, what, 50 years ago that that kind of thing happened. And, and I feel like we're just like, I guess my, my, my comment is to learn not just not feel like I feel like we have a, a, a you know incessant thing of thinking that we have to make everything up all over again. But there's really good foundational work that's been done, and again to learn from the things that worked and the things that didn't work. So I would suggest getting Teresa <laughs> on those on that task force to be able to come in and talk about what they learned, right? To just eliminate a whole bunch of brainstorming strategies that people may come up with now that she can say, yeah, that really wasn't very effective. Um, so there, that's my comment. Thanks so much, Anne. And, and you're right. I think there is a lot that we can learn from those who have undertaken this work and who've come before us. Um, I, I would invite that. Um, I would love, uh, you know, uh, for someone like Teresa to be at the table um, because new voices, there's a different context for how people think about even gender um, or even um, identity in 2020 where there, while there are lessons to be learned, we know that there is adaptation, right? Even as we talked about language earlier on, the language is evolving. And so how do we take those foundational ideas that have been developed in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and, and on and really and try and build on that? Um, uh, and, and apply it in a current context and in a context that we aspire to, whatever that possibility is that we have for, you know, if Patty's about everybody has a place in the circle, what does that look like? What does that mean? Um, others of you will have different um, speculative futures that, that you um, uh, identify. So um, I think that, uh, but to, uh, to not negate what's already been done by many, many. We, we stand on the shoulders uh, of uh, some wonderful people who've done amazing work. Teresa would be another treasure. She'd be another treasure of the city I'd, I'd identify. Um, okay, so we're at uh, uh, just uh, coming up to 610. Are there any um, last comments? Um, uh, in the chat box, uh, and you had a question with regard to the larger institutions and community assessment. I think Marta and Melissa have been um, uh, 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 providing uh, more um, comment and context on that. Um, so I won't kind of dwell on what they've already said. Um, fem feminism, yeah to always address race, class, and gender, navigate with an intersectional lens. Uh, can the video, resource list and video archive be shared with those who RSVP'd? Um, yes, because we will have the list. Is it okay, Pamela, if what we do is, um, we'll let you know that the link is up and then we're posting the link to our website. Um, with regard to the resources in the chat, I think there's been a group of us who've been trying to 
keep track of all those various links and um, uh, resources that people have been noting. So we'll, we'll find a way to make sure that uh, for those of you who are SVP that you have them. And then um, uh, I know that Amy Jo for a long time has been encouraging us to start to have resources available on our website concerning EDIA. So uh, this is as good a time as any for us to, to think about how we might do that. Um, I see good point, Natasha, but I'm afraid I didn't get to see the point. Oh, second wave of the gains are so easily mapped. Yes, Natasha, I would agree. So there is a, um, back to understanding the complexity, right? Uh, that Cesar referenced in regard to CADA, but there is also complexity and, and many connections, connectivity points um, uh, in that regard. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so uh, Cesar, are you seeing any hands? I'm scrolling through, I'm not seeing any hands. I just see your hands. <laughs> um, okay. I can't see any hands. So I, I think um, what I will do is, is close the proceedings on, on that note. Um, again, many thanks to all of you for staying on longer and taking the time. Um, uh, I've been writing down as well as members of our team uh, in response to what is it you want us to hear. Um, uh, please stay tuned in the days uh, and weeks to come as we uh, uh, regroup again on July 2nd. And again, as I said earlier, as the work proceeds with regard to the working group. Um, uh, if you haven't been a part of the Citizen Artist YYC conversations, uh, you can check our classifieds on our website, calvaryartsdevelopment.com. There's a register link um, there that you can go to. Uh, I believe the group uh, gets together on Tuesdays, Tuesday afternoons, um, and, uh, and, and we'll continue this conversation. So uh, many thanks to all of you. Please have a lovely evening. Uh, please take care of yourselves and uh, be well, and we'll talk soon. Bye.